What is up down and sideways, you absolutely gorgeous individuals? Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties for the most exciting, scariest, flame-ridden, melting hot moments of the year. It is your top 20 players at the World Championship. As is tradition, we're going to break it into two parts. We're going 20 to 11 today. We welcome... All feedback and opinions because the truth is there is no perfect top 20 list. I, outside of maybe a few players, which I think the community has all agreed has got to be at certain positions, it's up for debate. Anybody can be anywhere in this type of one. Depends on what you're valuing, how your you know, uh, equation is working out, whether you're going on the full history of the player this year, current form, recent form. All sorts of things like that can lead to how you're lining up your stacked lineup for it. But all of these lists, they're all stacked. That's the way you got to look at this once you get to the world's events and you're doing the top 20 players. And someone's getting burned. Multiple guys not going to make it in because there's simply not enough spaces. And we begin with maybe the most polarizing guy on the list here. Modern day the shy. It is Zeus for T1. And I know he's ran it down some games. His matchups against Doran for the most part haven't been good. But... In most of the biggest wins of the split for T1, who was the guy finding engages on Camille, finding out plays on uh, the Yone, dominating the lading phase in vain? It was Zeus. Zeus is going to be one of the handful of players, I say, that make their appearance on this list that you have to sort through the mixed bag to understand exactly why you're finding and deserving of a spot on this list this year. Zeus, you you talk about it, the big clutch moments. That's the big one for me when you're talking about how T1 has been able to find success, be able to uh, stabilize the ship in any type of way this year through the struggles. Zeus coming up big has been a very uh, important thing to see for this team. When you look at the champion pool, what he can bring to the table, of course, we just saw recently the Yone being something that is that difference maker. We've already seen plenty of times him busting out the vein saying you're taking a safe tank matchup or a safe, you know, uh, blind Renekton into me, you're going to pay for this situation. Zeus is a big time difference maker. And he's one of these guys that, you know what? The lows are there this year. The struggles are there, but the big time moments, the clutch performances to come through, they're also there and they are worth more. So you got to check those. And truthfully, if you went, further 21 to 30 you might have the other four members of t1 hanging in and that range of this list but we got to move forward in that 19 spot and this team as a whole i feel like because we haven't seen them play much everyone's forgotten about them it is top esports and this is tn in the 19 spot i think people forgot this dude got mvp in the summer split which is wild to think about with how much crazy firepower we have always seen from the LPL. And this year, this summer, no shortage of that firepower in the LPL. Tian coming out on top with that MVP vote. And I think a big part of that was the expansion of his champion pool, of his champion mastery, and how that was able to come through the metas that we've had. And you might say, yes, metas, what do you mean? We've had pretty stale options in the jungle. We have at least had options. And out of all those options that spread out, Tian's pretty much been able to cover all of them for his squad, for top esports. And to see him be able to play it at such a high level, knowing a champion like Lilia is still going to be around, you're looking at that one for him is a big one. And now a guy who's been around for so long still popping off on a lot of these carry junglers that we've seen, uh, again, especially throughout the end of that regular season in summer. And at times in playoffs as well, we just got so few games out of TES to be talking about him. But obviously, an integral part of why TES was pretty much consensus the second best team in the LPL for even going back to the spring split, really, all of 2024, we've been talking about him at that high level. Uh, ahead of him is a guy who came... A different play style, another jungler. He didn't get MVP, but the stabilizing, calming effect of Way is what brought BLG to that next tier midway through summer. It, it's not going to be the same type of levels that you're looking at when you're talking about the other junglers on this list, but you certainly cannot undervalue that stable presence that Way has brought into the lineup 
for BLG since he has arrived there and what he's been able to do. I think, uh, you know, you can maybe, if you want anything flashy, maybe you're going for the Nidalee pick. That might be a little bit of an angle, but outside of that, I think you're going for that team play angle when you're talking about Wei and what he can do. He is extremely reliable in that regard. He's got very good synergy with his lane mates already with BLG. That's one of the things I think you got to be attacking, trying to cause some type of confusion, some type of mix up. Because if he's on his game, he's in sync with the rest of his team. He's there because those lane advantages, they're going to be there for BLG, and he's going to be there to make it an even bigger advantage. And he's a harder guy to judge because he's not going to have eye-popping numbers where he's taking, uh, you know, he's doing all the damage on his team. He's taking kills. He's there for everything. Everything runs through him. But again, in an absolutely stacked BLG roster that all three lanes often just get out of control and snowball, he is that calming presence, and this early game does 100% roll through him. And again, BLG was good with Jin. They have become pure levels of greatness since Wei kind of fully took over that starting spot uh, in the jungle role. And we'll see how it kind of changes around Worlds because we've seen on RNG this guy's more than capable of carrying games on carry junglers. Yeah, and I think the, the equation there when you're talking about it is going to be, well, okay, you know, yes, you are able to expand and explode into that type of territory and be that carry option for the squad. If BLG is relying upon way to come up with some carry performances, we're truly digging down deep is that type of situation. It should not be ruled out. That is absolutely something that's got to be in the cards, got to be in the preparation to possibly be that trap card that BLG tries to pull out, tries to resurrect themselves within a series. That's something to look out for. One of the most exciting and first AD carry on this list. Another guy who it feels like it's been a while since we've been seeing the highlights, but we're talking Jackie Love. Ezreal's back in the meta. We've seen him on Ash, which is always a fun pick. And now as we hopefully transition away from the Ziggs, because that is not a pick that you want to be seeing Jackie Love piloted. No, that's not a pick I want to see Jackie Love on. And I think... Uh, Ziggs is a whole other conversation, quite a difference coming through with the patch notes uh, for this world's patch that we're going to be on with Ziggs. A lot of a lot of less structure damage is going to be the big one. I think maybe teams might want to still play with him because of what he can offer for awesome dude carries in the bottom lane and you know all these type of things, whatever. But uh, at the end of the day, when you're talking about a player like Jackie Love, we want to see some more lethality. We want some more of these traditional offerings because you know he's about to pop off. He's about to take these characters into that lethal no-no zone, into that zone where you just can't be anywhere near them on the map whatsoever. He's got that type of skill to take these hyper carries into that next tier. What we've seen from him this year and has been one of the things that we've talked about over the course of the last year and a half, really, about his career is kind of finding that ability to just hold the reins a little bit himself. We've always talked about it being the support. That's got to be the guy to help enable him fully. And enabling him fully is sometimes holding him back from some of these options that he likes to go in on. This year, I think that we have seen individually, he's developed a little bit of that. You slide in a, a couple dashes of Mako beside that, and you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, and let's not forget that at times throughout this year, him and Mako were straight up 2 v 2 in even the likes of Elkin on in that bot lane. They were the premier laning duo for the majority of that summer split. So put a little bit of respect on that bot lane for top esports. We mentioned his name. Maybe that summoned him. But a spot ahead of Jackie Love is that BLG support. The first um, support on this list. It's on who remains the king of engages in the LPL and that duo of him and Wei, we always talk about jungle support in terms of uh, collecting vision and controlling the map. And that synergy in itself has worked seamlessly since Wei came in. I don't care how many, I don't care which of the engaged supports are in the meta. You better be prepared to have to ban one or two of these guys against someone like on if it is taking over a series. That is the capabilities. That is the playmaking vision that he has for this squad. I think one of the big things when you look at what he brings to the table, what part of the equation from that bottom lane is he really bringing up? 
I think there are certain things that you can identify, obviously, in lane that are strengths that are beneficial to his bot lane partner, to the rest of the team, all these type of things. But it really is for me. You get outside of that 10, 15 minute zone, you're freeing up into a couple of these important, you know, oh, maybe we're fighting for some grubs or the Herald. Maybe we're fighting for that second dragon to keep that stacking going. That's where you want a player like on. That's where he's going to make that big play, start that team fight off and make sure it is the primed for the big dogs on BLG to capitalize. And one of the main reasons why BLG consistently wins team fights they have absolutely no business winning is because on sees that angle finds that engage that nobody else is able to see and uh, helps take over the game there and he's he's done it many times and we're seeing a lot more on than off in 2024 i know that was a meme of him getting caught out whether it was warding or not being on the same page with those engages few and far between here in 2024 and that's why blg has looked so deadly 15 spot it's a second 80 carry and I'm going to be honest, doing this list, you felt like you could fit eight AD carries in this top 20. We've got guys like Light, Gala, and Guma not in the top 20 who honestly have played well enough to be that high, but you can't just have half the list be AD carries, and you've got to respect a guy like Aiming, who has been initially, it was like these numbers don't add up, this guy's not that good, and then as the summer split went on, he said, oh no, he's putting D-plus in the backpack. Holy moly, I'm so happy to see this one aiming, coming on through and getting some very deserved, uh, you know, respect and accolation here for what he has accomplished this year and really how he's grown as an individual player over the course of obviously his career, but specifically his time with D plus Kia. Yes, aiming is one of these guys. And I think you laid it out. You were seeing the statistics, the numbers popping out throughout this year. And you're going, that can't. That can't be the aiming that I know. The guy that, you know, yes, he's had a pop off here or there, a couple moments that you may want to believe, but you always knew it was crashing down. He was going to find a way to make that type of individual mistake that pains you. And then it's going to get compounded with some of the things that usually was going on with the team environment that he was surrounded with. Not the case with D plus Kia. It has all been success. He has really found his stride, really found his fit within this team and the machine that it is. And his damage has been incredibly consistent across the board in the LCK. And how about an organization, a team that in its entire history, it's like less than five years for D+, but that's never been 80 carries that have been the featured guy. It was always Canyon Showmaker, Canyon Showmaker. And then as soon as Canyon leaves, who immediately steps up to be that guy? The most consistent carry threat it is aiming in that bot lane, even with rotating supports throughout the split. He's played with both Kellen and Moham to close things out. We'll see what that looks like at Worlds, but I think people underestimate being able to play at such a high level with two different supports. You know, absolutely, people are, are undervaluing what type of flexibility that brings, not only to the team, but individually as that player, as aiming in that bottom lane, you might be able to tailor yourself or know, okay, well, I'm bringing it. You know, this guy's going to be my buddy. He's going to be backing me up this game. I can expect this little bit of a difference. Maybe I can push it in this type of a way that I, can, that I can't with the other type of situation. Aiming is going to be a wonderful player for D plus Kia and really be an important key part of any type of success they're going to have at this event. A lot of those years you talked about D plus Kia's success where you're not really focusing on the ADC you better be prepared because this is going to be a year where there will be some focus, will be some attention from that pick and ban for D plus Kia to make sure they're getting one of those primary targets, primary options for your boy aiming. The only guy in the same conversation in terms of polarization as Zeus on this list is Mr. Tarzan in the 14th spot. And listen, he's had less egregious games, especially in that miraculous playoff run for Weibo. But there's no question, this guy had the most MVPs in the regular season. And then in playoffs, it's if he's not playing well, Weibo loses. And nine times out of ten, when Weibo wins a game, it's because Tarzan dominated. We need to come up with an award that is the MVPs and the MV knows or whatever the heck it is type of thing because Tarzan has been that this whole year he's been able to deliver uh, you know kind of in a two three week stretch you're getting the MVP performance and then 
hey, we go on a week and a half stretch of the MV, no. And then it's back to a week of MVP. And then it's two and a half weeks of MV, no, is the way that things went for Tarzan. A strange year in what has been an incredibly consistent and dominant career for Tim as a jungler. And what you look at, that is the equation that I think a lot of people are wrestling with this year through the performances, through the ups and downs. When you get to an event like Worlds and you got to start looking at the whole histories, the careers of these players, the big moments, do they come through? Arzan's a guy with not just one, not two. He's got like triple, quadruple check marks in those categories for him. But then you also check it against, well, have you been really up and down, unreliable this year? You can, you can probably put at least one, maybe one and a half of those check marks in, in a Tarzan's category is the way you got to view this player. So yes, there is bad. Yes, there is good. We're telling you there's way more good than there is bad. Even in an unpredictable year like this one for someone like Tarzan, he's got to be a key player to watch at this event. Tarzan, a fantastic segue into number 13 on this list because we've got all five old Griffin members at this world championship. I'm sorry I'm not including Sword on this one. Doran's getting the <laughs> nod for that one. But right ahead of Tarzan is his old buddy Lahens for that second support on this list. Uh, a few spots ahead of On and Lahens. Obviously, Genji was piloting or pioneering this Maokai Blitzcrank combo uh, where you're two screens away getting rooted and then pulled over. But we know that these pocket picks are what Lahens is known for, but he's been pretty damn good on the meta stuff too this year. The mad scientist going, going a little bit basic, going to the, the high school chemistry textbook this year and, and refreshing on some of these basic things, but still looking very strong. And once again, another great year with Gen G for him to what, he was able to do with this lineup how he was able to eventually find that stride that synergy alongside pays is a big part of why you find him this high on this type of list what we're talking about here and you laid it out that maokai blitzcrank combo blitzcrank that's the big one that you got to be worried about when you're talking about a player like the hens you already know singed bot lane whatever it's gonna be he's got the creative picks he's got the the nerve to try some of these risky things down in the bottom lane, willing to take that chance on himself and his reputation for the team to, to, to find something wacky out there and push it to the next level. That blitzcrank, though, that's the scary one because you laid it out. Even with that Maokai gone and removed away or, or you know whatever combination's coming on through, everybody knows it. It's the same in, in an iron game as it is all the way to the tippity top of League of Legends. You get just caught by one blitz crank hook, and that can change the game. And your man Lahens, he hits more than one blitz crank hook a game. He's absolutely getting his chances to make that game changing play. Often making it look like a point and click, but yeah, you can miss 19 straight blitz hooks, and then you land one on the carry. That's the game winner. That's the only hook that people are remembering. What people are remembering from summer for 369, unfortunately, uh, might be his Cassante and Brenecton games, which he played, I think, 10 of them in playoffs, and that tanked his numbers. You look at the stats, and you look at this guy looks like he shouldn't even be in the playoffs. But as soon as he's off, that Cassante or Brenecton, something like a Mordekaiser, he is the reason top esports is winning games, and when he's playing carries, we know he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the very best in the world. I instantly see that power, that stability that he can provide as a rock, as a leader for a team. A squad like JDG, very much missed all the way throughout the year, is one of the clear examples that we have seen in the in the LPL. Mr. 369, no stranger to these type of lists, this type of hype, this type of accolation. What do you need to know about him this year as you laid out? Yes, we've been running through a heck of a lot of Cassante, a lot of Renekton on the side as well. But we've had a couple dashes, a couple sprinkles of that Mordekaiser, of some other interesting picks come through. And he has been a menace in the LPL on those picks. He has been finding the wins, finding those kills, and disrupting anything that was ever being built up by the enemy team. 369 is absolutely one of the top laners, one of the premier options you have to keep an eye on at this event. And he's a guy who seems to level up the harder the competition is whenever he matches up against somebody like Ben and, you know, even pulling out a pick like an Orn that you might not think can take over a game. But let me tell you, 
369 can take over a game on something like an Orn doing damage and obviously he engages on that tank, warlock, shaman, mage, <laughs> hyper carry top lane Orn meme. The old one uh, checks out. Last guy on this list is yet another AD carry. Probably, I'm just assuming, definitely the youngest guy on this list at 18 years old it is Pays for Gen G, who. Obviously, since MSI has leveled up to a new level, can't wait to see him at his second world championship. Second world championship. How wild is that to say about a player like Pays and instantly? 18. And then you check it against, well, okay, well, what's the career resume? Is this just a, an absolute luck case that he's, no, he's got the championships. No, he's got the statistics. No, he's got the highlight tape. He's got everything to prove that he deserves to be here. Yes, this is Gen G Pays. Pays, welcome on back to the World Championship. Excited for this year for so many reasons. I think we talked about it last time. We talked about him at the World Championship that yes, there was a lot of hype, a lot of potential. You still had uncertainty about what you could do at this next stage, this next level of pressure, all these sorts of things. And we got some pretty good answers from him. And then we go back to the LCK this year and we see more dominance, a little bit slow, a little bit lagging to how good Gen G was during the spring. And then we get MSI and we absolutely have an explosion and we see Pays really take it to that next level, really explode at a bigger event, an international event. That's got us primed. And after an amazing summer split as well, where he was that top tier option for Gen G. You got to be looking at him with a lot of fire coming into this world's event. The confidence at an all-time high for him and multiple times throughout even just summer, head-scratching moments for casters. Like, it looks like, what the hell is this guy doing? And then he turns it into an outplay. So just the confidence to play on that absolute edge as such a young player is a rare thing to find in any role, in any region. So yes, Pace deserving to be on this list, but... This is just part one. We're going to do 10 to 1 in a whole other separate video. And that's where I think there's less arguments to be made for who's on that list. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out.